Welcome back, guys, to the OC Show. It's the seventh episode of the season four. And tonight we have a new guest running the show together with me, Tool, and Billzoid. We have Gabon from Player. So Hi. tonight it's a special night because today was an, a great launch. It was the Threadripper day of launch. So without further ado, first we're gonna dive into the scores of the week, the competitions and all, everything related to HWBot and overclocking. Then we're gonna dive right into Threadripper and push your head inside of the monitor because we're gonna, we're gonna talk so much about the new platform that you're gonna just disconnect probably. But yeah, the, the first submission for the scores that we're gonna talk about today is actually one of our guys. It's Billzoid, that thanks to his ghetto pot, you can actually see the pictures, I think in the submission on HWBot and the direction will let, we'll give you the link in the chat. You can see the ghetto pot he got with, uh, what was that? Duct tape? Yeah, duct tape. Duct tape? <laughs> yeah, it was just, uh, actually I have the wall right here. <laughs> Ta -da! So that's the this pop, guys. <laughs> makes an LN2 pop. <laughs> so you can see creativity takes uh, takes advantage of everything, and it was a submission I, for I'd the say team desperation, team. but I like it. <laughs> and poverty, <laughs> if you want me to add something, and yeah, it was it was a submission for the team cap. Can you tell us something about the team cap? So. Wait, like about the competition in general or the submission? No, no, just, just your team submissions and... Uh, so there's a DDR4 stage. Captain said, post whatever scores you feel like you can do. And I'm like, well, I need to do DDR4 anyway. Because, like, it's part of the condition for having those memory sticks. Is because they're, you know, uh, review... Well, review samples. I'm not reviewing them. I, I but, uh, <laughs> but basically, yeah, the idea, like... It was like, okay, so I need to bench them for max memory frequency anyway. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, okay, so I need to make them go faster. They're, I knew sort of that they might scale with liquid nitrogen. I don't have a memory pot at all. Just not don't have any. Mm -hmm. So uh, the heat spreader was conveniently tall enough and shaped that I could wrap some tape around it and bam, that, that didn't leak LN2 all over my desk in some pre-testing where I basically <laughs> had the memory stick held in some paper clips. Um, and, well, that didn't leak, so I'm like, okay, yeah, let, let's stick it to, stick this in an apex and, and go for it. <laughs> so with the CPU at around a minus 100 degrees uh, and the memory sort of hovering between minus 60 and minus 65, the thing is... Team Group actually put a lot of aluminum on the heat spreader of those memory sticks. They're still not heavy enough. It was really, really easy to like over pour them. So it's like if I gave it slightly too much LN2, the memory stick temperature would drop like 20 degrees. Uh, so yeah, it was really bad. And in a couple, like in say half a minute, they were back up by like five degrees. So you had to baby them. Mm, like not they, enough it wasn't running properly because it's <laughs> like it's a like I didn't have any thermal paste or anything. It was just like the stock heat spreader of the memory stick, which was just and, conveniently and, shaped and kind of heavy. So I figured I'd go like, for it. Uh, did you do anything to like insulate the ICs or anything, or just like? No, I basically went with. I'll make. Uh, basically, my plan was I will not have the memory stick anywhere in between twenty degrees and zero. So when I saw <laughs> that it was like, because I started, basically the session started, I pulled down the CPU to minus 100 because I know the memory controller on my 7700K is just kind of terrible. Yeah. Um, at least I suspect it's terrible. It might be me, but I'm going to blame the CPU. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I so I pulled it's the CPU you. down to minus 100. And then that point, what was happening was that it was really freezing through to the memory. And I wasn't really seeing any kind of progress, and the memory sort of hit 17 degrees, and I'm like, okay, well, this is going to start condensing water out of the air pretty soon. True. And so basically at that point I hit it with the LN2, and bam, it was at minus 3 degrees <laughs> right off the bat, because <laughs> that it has no surface, like, has no mass at all. So, yeah, I, I pulled it down very, very quick, and then it's just like, ice isn't conductive, so... Yeah. yeah. As long as it was frozen, I was, I was safe. You're fine. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it ran actually for like three, the stream went on for three hours. And I actually oh. think I started with the system already set up. So the memory probably spent like a good two hours frozen. Wow. Uh, That's without, impressive. 
failing. And basically, we stopped not because there was a problem with like the system not booting anymore. It was just like it, I wasn't making any progress. Uh, I have a I have a picture of twenty four thirty six megahertz. Well, I could never get anywhere around 2430 to even validate. Like, the moment I went for the validate button, it just died. Oh, so, okay. yeah, that, that was not pleasant. But, yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to try I again. There's, there's a potential for team support for a better 7700K, maybe. And so I'll try again. Because the memory stick, I've been, like, these are memory sticks from team group. They're from, like, a special binning session for max memory clock and so they should be able to do five gigahertz I see. So, yeah yeah so i really really want to test them on a on a cpu where i know the memory controller isn't garbage because this one complains from 4300 up like wow. literally you go over 4300 and it's just really 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 bad uh <laughs> so but you know yeah, but, but you know I really, like, wait, wait, the, the wait, funny see. thing is even with all of that that struggle this <clears> is the 20th score for ddr4 frequency in the world and it's the highest score on the team as of right now nice now, elkin, now. elkin our team captain said he's gonna try his own ddr4 and 7700k but yeah i don't know but he might beat me he might not if if his cpu is good then he might <laughs> you know we'll, we'll see i might be able to also uh use the team CPU, and then we'll just grab whichever team submission is highest. Oh. Is it the, the, the first score in Czech Republic? Yep. Again? So, uh, that's right. Yeah, that's also sure national score. So. Good going. Yeah, top in team, top in country, and uh, top 20 world. Yeah, you, you're just that scratching the bottom, but you, you'll be, you'll be in the 5G with, with club. Duct tape. Yeah, and, and no skills. <laughs> nah, random. don't don't say that. We we saw you what you're capable of. We can say that you're skills, pretty far from no skill. Consisted of let's try a different. Like I got really lucky that at some point in the stream I just decided you know what let's just one two skip a few. I'm gonna try post 115 BCLK because I was stuck at like 110 for ages. It wasn't going anywhere. You right? had a free video. Won't post. One twelve won't post. One thirteen won't post. Uh, well, eleven thirteen. Yeah, one thirteen wouldn't post. Eleven fourteen wouldn't post. And well, I didn't actually try eleven fourteen or eleven thirteen. I was just like, okay, uh, I, there's no way I'm getting this to post one ten. There's no way I'm getting it to validate more than hundred and eleven. And so I was like, at, I think the two hour mark of the stream. You know what, guys? I'm just gonna go for it and slapped one fifteen in it. And after three or four retries, it posted, and I'm like, that's not oh. fair. That's really <laughs> not fair. Because <laughs> uh. it's like you're sitting there for two hours, and it doesn't budge, right? I was literally just sitting at 4.5 gigahertz for like two hours, and then it's like, slap some settings in there, assuming it's never going to post again. And it posts on you, and you're it's just like, why, why, yeah. why, why does that work? <laughs> <laughs> Why can't I post any other frequency except like 109 and 115, right? Like all the other frequencies I tried, like no. And then I tried 120, that didn't work. But because after the 115, I was like, wait, so if I just skip a few more for megahertz, would it also work? <laughs> but that didn't work out. It was out. a nice plan, but it, it didn't work. Yeah, it, it does look like I maxed it out. So. Trust me when I say that it was actually impressive with the fact that you were using a duct tape box. I I really imagine think. you doing the same thing with a proper LN2 pot on the RAM, with a nicer CPU. I guess you can easily get in the top three. If you uh, not top on it. 10, 70. Top 10. Okay, top. you need X299 and the... Yeah, the memory controller on Z270 is not great, but... Yeah, no, like... I don't know. I'm, I don't consider myself very good at memory overclocking. I'm going to call this a fluke. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it's my just like a randomly booted one with better settings, and I'm like, okay, well, let's go for it. No, no, there are several of my runs also which I'll call a fluke as well, because if you ask me to do them again, there's a good chance that you know I'm never. Yeah, no, it. no, that's just B die in yeah. general. Yeah, B die yeah, in general, yeah. like I had 4300 C13 running on those sticks once. I have yeah. no idea how I did it. I probably <laughs> will never get it running again, but I've seen it, and I do have some scores on that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I mean, I'm not even in the 4G club, but you're complaining about the fact that you just eat 4.8G. I mean, I want to five. 
<laughs> okay, that's fine. Hopefully, we'll jokes aside, see, you know. jokes aside, yeah, it was it was a nice, you know, it was a really nice score from this handsome little guy with a nice hair in the in the <laughs> audience. <laughs> and yeah, let's skip to the next score. Uh, oh well, to the next competition and the next discussion. Uh, the Alza OC Cup oh, is running. Yeah. Last week it was like. Uh, one day before the start of the competition, so we could even discuss about scores. There were no scores. And it seems like the, the, the first guy in the competition is an Italian guy. There is also the, the fourth in Italy, so he's one of the, let's say, pros, even though he's just an, in the extreme league, so he's not uh, Sanino level, but he's nonetheless really great. He's, he got a lot of points. And he's really good at the at this competition, it seems. And right right after it, there's an English guy, then a Romanian guy, there's a, two Czech guys. So yeah, it's 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 been just a week, so it's still early to say to talk about anything yeah. because yeah, we know sandbagging. So yes. everything yeah. is gonna be like this till the last couple of days. We know that for sure. Like yeah. Yeah. September the second is gonna be insane, but till then, don't expect any any <laughs> real change in the, in the rankings. And yeah, and it's, it's 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 also the same story with a lot of other competitions right now, actually. So because because we have a lot of time left. I mean, even for the team cup and everything, you've got lots of time left. So yeah, things will think things will start to heat up in in another. 25, 30 days or so, when there's like 15, 20 days left, and that's when you start seeing some more. Yeah, that's an insane amount of days. So that's it's usually it, it's not usually to discuss it because it's nice to bring more awareness yeah. to, the, to the audience. But I guess it's not that relevant to talk about rankings right now because everything is still open, and so yeah, we wait and see. We wait and see. And speaking of amazing and sensational scores, today there was a huge upload on the HW Bolt. Finally! Cinebench yes. <laughs> record. Yes, Cinebench 15 was broken. The, the guy that broke it is actually a YouTuber. His name, as, as mentioned by, by Libor earlier, and yeah. his name is Son of Attack. And he got the impressive, amazing, utter most brilliant score of 9,015 points on Cinebench 15 with a quad CPU configuration. Not a quad cores, guys. It's a quad CPU. Quad it's CPU. 88 yeah. cores, 176 threads. So we're talking about huge numbers for a common user. But this guy has the resources to get a, CP a system like that. And props. For him to, to upload the score on the HW bot. It's over 9,000! Uh, <laughs> it's oh, over 9,000 for real, yeah. <laughs> So it, it, it was nice to see some new guy breaking in. Even though the score was like 300 points more than the previous one, not that huge. Also, same configuration. Yeah. Maybe it's, it's, it was just software optimization, I guess. Or. True. You know, with with uh, with with actually core counts this high, uh, this benchmark acts weird. Yeah. Just yeah, I heard something about like Cinebench takes so long to spawn threads that you get like, like it spawn like the process for spawning the actual worker Workers, thread yeah, is longer them. than the actual workers running. So it's what you end up benchmarking is how quickly you can spawn the workers instead of the yeah. actual render. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. And, and that yeah, plays you could really like heavily with between, the OS apparently, and it's really, really inconsistent. So you yeah. take between four yeah. and six yeah. seconds. Yeah, I, mean, I was when I was benching with the two six nine nine V fours, I saw that behavior all the time, all the time. Yeah, it, it's it's an impressive score, even though of course there was no overclock on the CPU. It was just some tweaking on the RAM. Yeah. Because of course, it's a it's a server platform. You you don't expect overclock. You you're not even allowed to overclock the CPU. Yeah, there's, 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 there's this is very limited like, thing you can do. Yeah. Yeah, there's not going to be like 
technically, if if there was like an overclocking motherboard for this, you might get BCLK control. But this is a this is literally a I think a rack system, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that, yeah that is HP. being used. HP, HP why would HP give you freaking BCLK controls in the <laughs> yeah, box? Exactly. Who cares? You don't even get that for desktop I, user parts. I mean, get my yeah, you, exactly. Racks. So it, it's yeah, it, it's it's an impressive score from like. The perspective of it went fast. Um, yeah. There's not much overclocking behind it, though. Yeah, it's just a monster score. Even though even one megahertz would make a difference with but so many. Guys, seats. I mean, look, it's over nine thousand, so it wins. Yeah. <laughs> it's over and, 9, and the get right now is mauling my feet. So <laughs> <laughs> if you hear me screaming all of a sudden, that's because of the cat. But let's get back on topic and let's speak about. Something really interesting because the OC World Championship, the Overclock World Championship, is taking place Montreal. in Montreal. And yep. we mentioned that in the last episode, but now everything is official with articles and and reps and stuff. So uh, we're gonna contest rules are out and the hardware lists are out and you've got all the details ready to you know yes. ready out there. So yeah, it's going to be one amazing event, I think, man. And plus, Montreal is a gorgeous, gorgeous city. I mean, yeah. it's just it's, it's, yeah. a, it's an amazing, it's an amazing city. And as as usual, as for the previous stages of the qualifyings and the world tour and everything, uh, the the event will take place in a bigger event that is the DreamHack in Montreal. Uh, you can buy the ticket from the for the DreamHack, and you can access the air-cooled uh, or ambient-cooled uh, workshop for the, for, the, for, the, for the rookies, for the people that don't know how to overclock, and you can learn something about overclock. If you pay uh, some kind of special ticket, uh, I don't know actually the technical term for that, but if you, if you get... Uh, just uh, let's just call it the LN2 pass. You yeah, just have it's an LN2 pass, exactly. So you can, you can actually use LN2 and uh, try with your hands. Uh, I mean, not your hands. It would be dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> you can try LN2 cooling with uh, overclocking. So it's a great experience, and it, as usual, it opens so many windows for all those people that are were I don't know maybe interested, uh, got curious with overclocking, but never actually did that because of fear of breaking something, or yeah, because they, they couldn't afford it because. It's, LN2 is difficult to come by or for whatever reason. Or just didn't want to try it without, you know, having the proper guidance. Because look, I mean, the, the, the worst thing, I mean, the biggest scare that most people have before they do LN2 is, what if, you know, what if I kill something? Because jumping from air and water into LN2 is a massive step up. So, you're, you're, you know, you're always scared that that initial pattern. I mean, I'm still scared of killing stuff every single time I bench on LN2. So, that paranoia never really goes away because at the end of the day, you know, you're paying out of your own pocket. So you kill something. <laughs> I'm used to I it, know to that be thing. fair. Yeah. yeah I so kill I, something I, every I kind session. of lost that fear. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Same with that. And then it's, it, it, gets, it gets seriously expensive in a hurry, you know? So, and, and it's like, I mean, I just taped an LN2 pot. I, well, no, I made an LN2 pot yeah, out of tape. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't <laughs> think I have that sense of risk anymore. <laughs> You've gone beyond that level. You've crossed Next that line. time, I'm going to yeah, pull I mean, my fingers and put them on fair, the ceiling. Like, I already last year, I buried a memory stick in dry ice. So, no, I mean, even, <laughs> so, so it's just like, we need maximum frequency. So if you money, you land up doing stupid things in the quest for performance. Like, <laughs> I know I've bought like 1080s and like I've best them and I've like, oh, I just wish I could cool you a little bit more and I've actually taken L into and I've like chucked it on the goddamn heatsink while it's running, you know? You uh, maybe oh, I did that. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> yeah, work yeah. that well though. You maybe, yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah, it depends on the car. It depends on the car. It depends on the car. It works actually. But, <laughs> yeah, at the end of the day, hey, if it goes faster, you win. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, we, yeah and it's your, and that's actually the beauty about buying your own gear, which is why I mean, I, I, if I kill it, I kill it. It's my own. Like, in fact, I I don't want to kill samples or I don't want to kill, kill like review pieces because then you know you gotta go back and say, oh, well, I'm sorry, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, they're not gonna send me anything yeah. else. Yeah, I know the feeling. <laughs> yeah, but actually, I think we all went through the LN2 spray on the 
reference <laughs> card or something <laughs> like yeah, everyone. Yeah, tipping it over. Whoops, a daisy. Yeah. No, no, no. I actually did that with the with the pipe from the viewer because w when we do that, we get the 200 liters, the one that are taller than me, even though I'm a dwarf. Never mind. <laughs> but the the, the like the, the huge metal pipe, we go like, yeah, let's spray this shit and go for it. Like it, it's fun. It's, it's fun, freaking yeah. engines because there's so much yeah. condensation in that moment, but it's fun. <laughs> and it's pretty yeah. much the end of the session after that, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, you pull a stand like that, you can kiss that session goodbye, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> just, just tipping it from the dewer and right into the pot, just because you don't care anymore. It's just like everywhere. <laughs> what are you benching? An iceberg, can't you see? <laughs> <laughs> goodbye, conformal coating. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Okay, guys, let's 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 leave the nostalgia lane and let's dive into the next topic. That is the GOC qualifier. Oh, yeah. This year's too. There's the Galax overclocking contest or carnival. What's it's the carnival? Carnival. Uh, yeah. I, yep. I remember that right. And yeah, the, you you can see at the link the requirements to participate to the online qualifications. Yeah. Basically, you, you need to have the 1080 Ti Galax Hall of Fame. Yes, it's the it's one of the magic trio for the yeah. extreme OC cards. As builds, I said in one of his videos recently, you have the Lightning Z from MSI, the Ink Bean from AVGA, and the Hall of Fame from Galax. Galax. So those are all one thousand bucks each. Yep. Well, so no, the Lightning's actually cheaper than all the other ones. Yeah, like eight ninety nine. What? Yeah, the, the lightning is like a hundred bucks down from the rest of them, so it's not a huge difference, but it is a tad cheaper. Um, so honestly, if you're if you're considering buying an LN2 1080 Ti anyway, I think the whole being able to go for the Galax overclocking ca carnival qualifier like that kind of classifies as a value add, at least to me. Yes, it does. Because yeah. it's like yeah. it's it's a pretty cool competition. They've done a really good job of trying to make it. Like, well, I, it's, I think it's going to be really RAM heavy just because of how they've chosen their benchmarks. Like, you have 3D Mark Time Spy for Stage 1, you have 3D Mark Fire Strike Extreme for Stage 2, then you have Stage 3, which is Super Pi 32 million, um, Stage 4 is Memory Frequency, and then Stage 5 is GPU Pi 1 billion. Yeah. The thing about, basically, Stages 1, 2, 3, and 4 is your CPU is limited to 6 gigahertz. And a 1080 Ti will, like, with how the 3D Mark overall scores work, the 1080 Ti puts down so many graphics points that you need a really good CPU score but if you want a good overall at that so point. Everything so everything is going to be invested in, on the memory. memory. Yeah, because the CPU is limited to 6G and every 7700K ever should hit 6 gigahertz. Yeah. yeah so, if, oh. yeah, if you have something too. that wouldn't do that, I mean, condolences for that. <laughs> yeah, no. So, so they really like it's going to be really memory heavy, which I think is kind of sad because like this is a really cool GPU and it would be cool to see it like pushed. But on the other hand, if they required like you know relevant CP like a CPU that wouldn't get completely overwhelmed by a 1080 Ti, we'd be looking at like a 6950X, yeah, which would make the com competition just completely inaccessible because you'd have to run twice as much RAM and then the actual 10 core Intel CPUs, which are at least a thousand. Well, if you're buying a new one right now, it's a thousand bucks. So, by the old one, it's 1700. Yep, well, you wouldn't be buying the yeah. old one new, I hope. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. No, but they, they have made it a, like, it is interest like, it is an interesting, uh, like, it is, they've made it access as accessible as it could be for a 1080 Ti That's based right. competition. Like, That's right. uh, they've also basically, with the RAM, they've basically said you can bring whatever Galax RAM you feel like. They really don't care. It's no longer you need to have the special Hall of Fames. You can just buy any Galax memory you want. As long the, as it's retail. Yeah, as long as it's retail. The... Only sort of annoying restriction for a lot of people might be that the 1080 Ti you need to get is the Hall of Fame OC Lab Edition. Yeah. That one is only available from the Galax store. You can't buy it at anywhere else as far as I'm aware. Yeah. It's going to be a pain in the butt when it comes to buying that outside of the States 
of shipping. Asia. Ship, yeah, like yeah. shipping, I, I imagine, is going to be a nightmare for some people. Uh, I guess taxes do. I uh, yeah, just so, yeah also taxes. when it comes through customs, it's just going to be like, oh, look, a thousand dollar GPU, 20% yeah. tax on that. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so for us slammed. European guys, it's going to be more than 1,500 euros. Oh, yeah, easy. If I want to call for that GPU in India, it's I'm going to probably land up paying the better part of like 1600-1650 USD. So that kind of just like completely writes it off the table for me. $1700 is a lot for a GPU. Yeah. You could yeah. buy two GPUs for that. Yeah, yeah. And make more points. Yeah. But I guess the the added value is as Bill well, said, it's, it's the fact it's that added you value if you can win this. Yes, exactly. you gotta get into <laughs> the top twelve. That's the problem, right? It's like this. This is and and especially like the Galax, uh, the 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 overclocking carnivals. This is like a top competition. Like you see, really top guys go for these. It's yeah, not yeah. gonna the be top like ten guys. I have a yeah. 1080 Ti. Well, actually, I think it's top twelve that they're uh, giving. Yes, tickets. yes, yeah. yeah. It was just a rounding, but uh, I mean, it's the, the the top tier of the rankings that we. Yeah, yeah. So top twelve guys in the in this competition will actually qualify, but it's going to be a tough competition. Though I do know Dan Cop has said that he's not going to be qualifying. So oh, yeah, if you were worried about the world number one guys. smashing you, he's not going to, don't worry. <laughs> oh my god, you can win this. There's this everybody under good. him. <laughs> yeah, just like 99,000 people. Yeah, nothing that much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, even though I doubt 99,000 like, people will afford one more, 1,000 I mean, more. If please. it wasn't for the whole Galax Store exclusive GPU, I really think that that would be a competition I would almost consider entering if I had the budget. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Well, I, did, uh, I, did, I did even speak to the Galax distributor here in India to find out if you know he can just order the card and bring it down. So if that works out, then maybe it's affordable because uh, then I don't have to pay for all the shipping and the duties and all of that. It'll just come down, to, you know, along with the shipment and which yeah, magic happens. But yeah. If that happens, then maybe I can take part in this. Uh, but otherwise, just there's just no yeah. way. They do also have like a pretty cool prize draw, which again is just random luck. Um, yeah. But and, and like r really, you're pretty much playing. Like you're probably it's almost as bad as playing the lottery if you're <laughs> hoping to win the lucky prize draw on on it. Well, the card is pretty exclusive, so there probably won't be that many people. But still, you know, don't. Try, try, like bet on it, um, but okay, so the, the lucky prize draw is pretty cool. So there's two 1080 Ti Hall of Fames up for grabs again. So if you buy one, you can get a second. <laughs> Yay! Cool. And there's also half a terabyte SSDs, uh, four th DDR4000 memory kits, and a gaming keyboard. RGB. Yeah. You gotta say RGB or it's not. Dude, RGB. it's a gaming keyboard that is literally. Yeah, but you <laughs> have to say it's it's the contract. You have to say RGB every time you yeah, read sure, RGB. Sure. <laughs> I mean, RGB ink pays us all, don't they? Like, <laughs> this is, that's that's it's it's the law. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 the new it's the new law. You, you get jailed for not saying RGB. Yeah. We're sending your butt right now. You you don't even appreciate that. Like we're sending your butt. Beautiful. Literally, if you go to jail. Don't say that, because you're going to make Christian Nair cry. He's going to cry if he watches this. Uh, jokes aside, I guess we covered it for the competitions and the scores for today. So we're going to dive into the news. And the first topic we want to talk about is something that took us uh, like out of, of the last after party. Yep. So it was like more than 30 minutes. We would be <laughs> maybe the entire after party last week. We've been looking for the CPU number one out of 250 that were given to reviewers and personalities and YouTubers and all those things. I'm pretty sure business partners fall on that list as well. Yeah, yeah. so even also because I, I didn't see any CPU other than 100, maybe 120. I saw one as low as like 39. I oh, yeah, and, and maxed out at 100 something, yeah. Yeah. So, we had, yeah. I, we had the list, we had like, I think, about 15, 20 numbers already put down. Yeah, it seems like they're reserved for whatever. 
And it seems that Lisa Su, of course, the CEO of A&D, that lovely woman, got the number one. And I'm so pissed off because I really wanted to see that in the hands of some reviewers, like some kind of, I don't know, top tier hierarchy reviewer, like I'm the best AMD reviewer. I guess that's why they didn't give it out. So yeah, they, it would be so totally... they wouldn't fight over it. Like yeah. they just went yeah. random. It, it would, yeah, I mean, considering how much drama uh, there was around Linus Tech Tips getting to show off Threadripper first in the yeah. Alienware system, yeah. It's like, if somebody got that number one CPU sample, there'd be like, oh, we're never reviewing AMD again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, so, yeah, random numbers, and there we go. The, the problem is fixed. So, yeah, after a chunk of our time waste, Lisa <laughs> actually tweeted, like, a couple of days later, then she had the CPU. I actually sent a tweet to Lisa to, to ask her if she knew which CPU or, or who got that CPU. She, got, she actually tweeted the day after. So maybe she read my tweet or maybe many people asked for that. So I'm pretty sure many people asked for that. She yeah, read we, the we can't have been the only one to notice no, that number one is missing. Excited. <laughs> so who has the highest number then? <laughs> who, who's the worst AMD reviewer? Uh, probably <laughs> probably someone at Intel. <laughs> yeah, the Intel CEO. Yeah, that's, Wait, that's, that's confirmed awesome. that you got 250? <laughs> There was this rumor on Reddit, like on the uh, uh, slash r slash AMD. Yeah, well, number one is Lisa Su, and number two fifty is Intel CEO. And they were like, "It's not like that, but if it is, it's hilarious." <laughs> that would be the sa most savage burn ever. Yeah, that would be an epic troll. Epic. <laughs> yeah, epic. Speaking of the devil, epic. But oh. switching sides, so passing from the red to the blue team, uh, this week was constellated of many, several important leaks about the upcoming Coffee Lake I, I I don't even know what to believe anymore. Like, just the... Uh, <laughs> okay, so let's stick with the facts. The platform is going to be launched on August 21. Yeah. 21st, sorry. So it's in, uh, in 10 days. In 10 days, we have a new platform. So this year, it's three platform from Intel. And I guess thanks AMD for bringing up back up the competition, or we will have never seen an i3 four core, four thread CPU. Because that's the point of the news. It seems that now everything was scaled down, and i3s are four cores, four thread. And i7s. Will be six core thread. Six core twelve threads. Then what about the what about the quad core with hyper threading and the six core without hyper threading? Are those both i fives? No idea. Yeah. There was there wasn't many leaks about it. Maybe yeah. they're still deciding on which what CPU to put where. Yeah, like six yeah. six or four eight as an i five. Yeah. They're just yeah. deciding on that. Possibly. Very, everything very, very. was pretty rushed. I mean, in back in March when Ryzen were, was released, uh, Coffee Lake was brought from I mean, technically, January. Technically, it's actually September? it's actually too late for them to decide, no, because like stuff will already be in shipping. I mean, will be reaching. Yeah, 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 yeah. So unless it's a Weber launch, like a presentation of the platform, not the introduction ah. of the market, that would make sense, though. Yeah. It's it's really close to the other launches, and it seems that we will see a serious competition also on the low end. So we're gonna see Ryzen trees four core for threads, i trees four cores for threads. We're gonna see uh, i fives versus uh, Ryzen five with four core eight thread six core twelve threads against okay. who yeah. knows what. So we're gonna yeah. see. But it seems that in the I hand with the eight core CPUs, Ryzen 7 seems to have a little advantage on, on that, but we will see how it will perform actually. Because as we know, IPC for Intel is a, is a bit higher and having just six cores instead of eight cores will definitely bring the frequency up. So yeah. that thing backed up by the higher IPC will definitely give out a competition even though it will have two less cores. I'm sure. I'm sure, and 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 they will clock. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure they'll clock pretty high in terms of frequency as well. So yeah, they will I mean, th this is still on like Intel's refined 14 nanometer, 14 isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it should definitely clock well. It should definitely work well on LN2. 
Um, the thing I'm wondering is, is it actually like, did they actually do anything to the cores or did they just make more cores? That's what I'm wondering is because we had like, we had Skylake and then we had KB Lake, which was literally just Skylake on uh, silicon upgrades. Yep. And is this just KB Lake plus two? I, it could very well be apart from like like micro improvements, maybe like faster DMI. Little yeah, the, the chipset got a big upgrade yeah. in terms of connectivity, yeah. though. Unfortunately, considering how the chipset is actually connected to the CPU, that doesn't really. Just, yeah, exactly. It doesn't help much <laughs> because ultimately, if you actually try to use all the new connectivity on the chipset, uh, yeah, you're going to flood the connection to the CPU. Yeah. So. Okay. Speaking of the chipset, it seems that this lineup of CPUs won't support Z170 and Z270. It would yep. require the Z370 chipset mainboards. So all those people that bought the platform at the beginning of the year should be really pissed off about it, I guess. Uh, yeah. I mean, well, not like, once, but twice. Because it, it, it depends on how much more performance you're getting. But then again, I would be pissed because now if you get a six core for the price that you paid like for a 7700 case, maybe four months ago, I would be angry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd, well, not really, I mean, I'd just be like a little sad. I wouldn't be angry with you. But there's also the rumor of the six core, no HT, no HT i5. If those cost like i5 prices, typical yeah. i5 prices, then it's just yeah. like, that if you're a 7700K owner, it's just like, well, thank you, it's Intel, for making this yeah. platform yeah. so upgradable. Seriously. <laughs> so but just to clarify, it's yeah. the same socket, it's the same socket, 1151. It is. But it needs a new chipset. Yes. yes. It's a little they've weird. Got, like, they've gotten tired of <laughs> moving one pin around. Yeah, I mean, likes of Threadripper's guaranteed for two generations, according to AMD now. Uh, yeah, wait, wait, wait. Uh, Ryzen is not Threadripper. Like, yeah. AM4 Ryzen not is PR4. guaranteed Ryzen, to, like, Ryzen, 20 Yeah, AM4 so. is correct, correct. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I actually was going to ask for that to the AMD rep, but she's on paid time off, so I cannot ask that. But I'm not sure about Threadripper being... Uh, a thing till 2020. I guess, I hope so. Maybe even later than that, because if you consider that on the same socket, maybe with a different pinout, you're having 32 cores, 64 thread CPUs, maybe it would be just some kind of refresh, some kind of BIOS upgrade, from, I think, but I'm not totally sure. From what I've sort of heard rumor-wise about Ryzen development, so what it could lead to Threadripper, is we're going to see, so the next step is a higher clock speed Ryzen. Zen Plus. They're, yeah, so they're going to make a clock for higher. That should be a drop in upgrade for Threadripper. Like, that should not be an issue. It, it's If it fits on AM4, then it has pretty much the same connectivity as what you see on Threadripper, because the dies have the same connectivity on in, in both cases. Yeah. Yeah. So they should be able to drop that into TR4. Then the next upgrade after that is rumored to be a six-core CCX or something like that. So okay. two more cores per CCX, in which case, again, if it fits on the M4, it should have the same connectivity as what we already have on Threadripper. They should be able to put it on Threadripper again. Yeah. And enable so it with a BIOS update. Yeah. Yeah. You could yeah. potentially maybe 18... Maybe even up to 24 cores. Because, like, that's actually, like, AMD has a huge advantage in, in like, being able to keep something upgradable because AMD is building Zeppelin dies exactly. as systems yeah, on exactly. a chip. There's exactly. nothing on there that, like, is, like, there's very little motherboard bound for any of the Zeppelin Zeppelin chips. So, yeah, basically, if, the socket just exists no, I mean, to a, hook up the USB, hook up the SATA, hook up the, hook yeah, up the memory. Know, the, and the that's SFS. all it does. <laughs> The SFF mainboard from Ryzen, you know, the, the X3, what was the, the, the number? X320, X300? X300. X300, X300. Yeah, yeah. There, there were two of them. I don't remember the There's A320, one. which is the yes. non-overclocking chipset. And, and, the sucks. X300. and then there's the X300 chipset, but which is a strip Those are down. not chipset. Those are not chipset. Those are just naming for the functions that the CPU makes for the mainboard. Like, if you see the mainboards, they don't have the, the chipset. It's everything connected to the CPU. They don't. Yes, they don't. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so that basically, you could just make a, C a CPU that 
has everything on it. And it would make sense to use some kind of some part of those connections to add what would take to upgrade the CPU, like making it uh, on the CPU directly. So you wouldn't need to upgrade your main board yeah. uh, on oh, the yeah. other side. Oh yeah, I mean, considering they have, they have, they actually have so much space like, with two non-functional dead, well, oh, space, whatever you want to call it, basically, those two dies that are, that are empty. So there is space, there is, there, there is room to grow. The socket's identical between this and Epic. The, you know what I'm yeah, yeah, the thing though is like, with uh, Threadripper, those are literally dummy chips. And dummy the main chip. problem right now is those sockets that we have for TR4 are not wired for eight channel memory. Yeah. So yeah. you can't, they're like, I guess what they could do is like take a Zeppelin die, drop one of its half a memory controller on each of them, put four of them in there. But yeah. then you'd like, then the whole non uniform memory access would just be a complete utter disaster because you'd yeah. basically yeah, have these four individually really miserable memory controllers. Yeah. And you'd basically have, like, at any given time, if you want a decent bandwidth, you'd have to pull through the Infinity Fabric, which has a latency penalty. So I don't think we're going to ever see them using all four, like, actually using four dies on the TR4 socket because. Technically, yes, they could do that. The socket doesn't, like, it wouldn't play well with the, the way the socket is currently designed. And if they want to keep backwards, uh, you know, forward compatibility for a while, they can't just, they, they can't really add extra chips in there. Yeah, okay. Except okay. for the two they already have. And, you know, if, like, TR4 is literally just AM4 twice, pretty much. So if it fits AM4, times, it'll probably yeah. fit TR4. I don't see why they won't be able to just keep rolling out upgrades for it. Unless they decide that, you know what, it'd be really funny if we just took the Epic socket and moved it into Enthusiast range. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, would be, that would be really funny. You you would have desktop great. I mean, user yeah, By the time the 60, yeah, 64 CCX came out, came out, we'd have 48 core consumer chips. Yeah, oh. because there's, there's already talk of um, epic workstation boards, right, from Asus and from the likes, because they're definitely coming, even uh, I think Supermicro is doing some. So they're definitely coming. So you're going to have a single single socket, 32 core, 128 PCIe lane monstrosity, technically, as a workstation now, very, very soon. Yeah. And yeah. also, let's not forget about the fact That's that only, the, both Ryzen and... I mean, Look, two thousand dollars is not really what I would call enthusiast, but is now enthusiast HDET territory thanks to Intel and last generation ten core being nineteen hundred, eighteen hundred dollars. Yeah. Now that is two thousand plus taxes actually. Yeah, I mean that's now that is considered high end. So and that's considered enthusiast. So if you look at it that way, two thousand dollars, thirty two cores, one twenty eight lanes, octa channel memory controller, not so bad. Yeah, not so bad. And yeah, so. I guess we can switch right into the Threadripper. I mean, we already started talking about Threadripper switching right from the Coffee Lake discussion. Yeah. But yeah, we can, as you we as can, you can it's see, kind of has a couple of points on that because because look with 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 Z370, it's just going to be the whole question is whether the CPUs are a hell of a lot faster in terms of overclocking, whether there is any tangible benefit because right now what what it what it kind of looks like is that it's going to be more of a cabby lake refresh i mean this is it's too early this is pure pure speculation there are no numbers out but if it's just going to be a cabby lake refresh then for guys with uh, you know the guys who are already on the 7700k's don't really need to upgrade because it's not going to be that much more difference unless there's a big clock for clock difference i don't see that I don't see any major path breaking instruction set being put in here, you know. Uh, maybe they'll get EDX 512, but that's questionable as well. I don't know if they will. But apart from that, yeah, it's it's kind of up in the air. One thing the, that I, sorry, go on, yeah. then I speak. No, yeah, you yeah. go on, don't worry. Um, so so with 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 these guys, unless you've got the six code, it does it it does hurt present. Uh, you know, mainstream users because you've got a six core potentially for the price of a previous gen quad core with hyper threading. So resale values have tanked on those systems. I mean, there's you're gonna have to sell them dirt cheap for one. But uh, secondly, 
if you have a six core in the mainstream and then you've got a six core um, in your HDT pl platform, and if this goes potentially faster, it's 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 going back to the same old thing where you know HDT has kind of been one generation behind, where they kind of about just about caught up, and then now they're they've you know kind of moved back another whole generation. So yeah, there's lots of there's there's lots of question marks, and three three platforms from Intel in a year is I think path break. I don't think that's ever happened in the history of that company, has it? Three gen three platforms in a year. It's uh, absurd. Maybe it happened when there was the Broadwell launch. Like yeah. there was Aswell, Broadwell, and right after that, Skylake launch in yeah. nine months. Well, Broadwell was, didn't really launch. It was more like, hey, look, this this is like a really bad version of Haswell that we're <laughs> only going to use for laptops. Because <laughs> um, yeah. it but doesn't, still, it just it, doesn't work. It was work. still available to buy. I, I, get, I mean, I saw yeah, I mean, yeah, you could buy a 5775C if you were insane. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess so. Because it didn't clock. It didn't perform any better. I mean, the, the it didn't only have better some thing was the IGP. So yeah, not, it was like, oh really yeah, look at this massive it. IGP for a desktop chip. Nope. The what was the name? Iris Pro. Yeah, I the Iris yeah. graphics. Yeah. Yeah, the Iris Pro. So yeah, we, we wait and see. It's just a couple of weeks. So in in a couple of episodes, we'll be able to give you more details about the platform, more details about the performance levels, which CPUs are gonna be released and stuff. And on a, on a side note, something that wasn't actually planned to discuss, I read this somewhere that there's the intention to launch a Skylake X HEDT platform, at least refresh by the beginning of the next year. Like, what? it wasn't meant to exist. The Skylake X HEDT oh. is not meant to exist, as, as Intel said, but Intel said many things and many things happened. There that, is literally a fire in Intel's marketing department. They're, they're like, they're, they're, they've they've pulled out like a twister board. They've thrown random ideas onto it, and now they're sacrificing chickens <laughs> <laughs> to okay. figure out what to do next. <laughs> yeah, it's, like uh, chicken it's, drop dead on uh, re-release -re Skylake X. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Let's do that. <laughs> So yeah, we we'll wait and see. I hope they're gonna skip the Skylake X and just go just for go, the Coffee Lake X. Yeah, just go straight to Coffee Lake X and then please. So that things will be much better. Also because as we're seeing now, Can that we as, get the board as, on your as mother said. <laughs> like who do I have to like either kill or who do I have to like you know beg, plead, do whatever? But can we just get Thunderbolt on your motherboards, man? Like look, they're six hundred plus dollar boards. Without Thunderbolt, yeah, it, that's it that's a shame. You could have Thunderbolt on the old Gen X ninety nine boards on low end Z two seventy and Z one seventy boards, and not on Nifty yeah. two ninety nine. That's that's it, it's, that's shameful. That's the only the only word I can say. It's shameful because it's a shame that Intel is uh, holding back on such a wonderful technology that is going to improve yeah. Yeah, so many is. aspects of Look, daily so life. Are, not overclocking. So so many of our YouTuber gear is now running off Thunderbolt, or we'd love to get Thunderbolt, you know, because like it's just so much faster. Even our yeah. sound cards and stuff. So, look, Thunderbolt is mainstream. Our you you Intel, you want it to go mainstream. It's here. There's a button of devices. Stuff is getting cheaper, but we don't get Thunderbolt. And Thunderbolt. the Type C, the type -C yeah. connector is there. It's there on the goddamn board. Yeah, but truth to be told, there's some guys in the chat are saying uh, the fault is to. Uh, they they say the fault is on the ma motherboard makers, and I can reply to that with no, it's not motherboard makers. It's the fact that this platform was rushed. It, it should have has been launched. Been in, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it should, Look, it should have launched in these days. Part. It should have launched yeah. on twenty first instead of Coffee Lake, while it was launched back in Computex so, at the end of May, beginning of June. So the, they had three the months board. less. From what we heard in Computex, this could have changed. But when 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 we were at Computex, we flat out heard that Gigabyte is just not going to support Thunderbolt. At yeah, all. Gigabyte's reps just told us they they didn't make it in time. They yeah. didn't have a chance to include Thunderbolt in their designs. And I guess <laughs> I guess Asrock as boards with Asrock Thunderbolt does, actually, uh, and Tai Chi and the Thunderbolt too. Some do. And but it's it's. Too few models, the more yeah. expensive ones, 
while Thunderbolt should be some way it to... It like USB. It should be taken for granted. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's the same exact, uh, apart from the controller, I guess. Yeah. Uh, it's it's the same port, so it's the same wiring things and, and stuff. So it shouldn't cost that much more for the makers. The problem is they had to implement the design on the boards. And they, didn't, they didn't have time. And also, I guess, that the fact that more CPUs have less than 40 or 44 lanes influenced the fact more. that they couldn't actually provide enough lanes for the Thunderbolt yeah. ports. Yeah. Well, the and Deluxe comes with a Thunderbolt card, but it's not native. Yes, yes the Deluxe does yeah. come with a Thunderbolt 3 card. That's true. And yeah, so it's... Uh, Truth to be told, we, we knew this launch was rushed. And many overclockers, many extreme overclockers, especially in the top 20, top 30, kept saying and keep saying that the CPUs were planned since ages, that were planned since a couple of years. Like their roadmap is fixed in time and they followed that for years. While I can tell I mean, you I'm, that- I'm pretty sure the scheduling for producing the silicon, yeah, that, that was fixed. Chopping it up into high-end desktop wasn't. Absolutely. <laughs> Somebody oh, came up with lost. that when they heard, wait, Ryzen, wait, they want to make a bigger Ryzen? Two. Are you kidding me? What are they doing at AMD? They're going to ruin us. <laughs> Guys, sorry for losing tool. He'll be, he'll be back really soon. I, I probably guess he's having uh, connection problems. Uh, but he will be back really soon. And yeah, the AMD shocked everyone with the eight core 500 bucks uh, CPU. Oh no, 500 uh, bucks. They, 1800 yeah. X. Sucks. Yeah, for the, the 1700. For the, top of the, end. Yeah. the 1700 is like a buck. It is like it blows the freaking door. Like X99 looks like a freaking joke next to the 1700. Yeah, because you can get. All the way up to like just under the 6950X in terms of performance for, for less for I less mean, than for the freaking motherboards. Yeah. Which yeah, is freaking way. ridiculous. Yeah. And then into I mean, for the and, and then, the, then the better part comes when AMD's like, you know what? We're we're gonna glue two of these together and make a bigger version and not make it a crap ton more expensive. And at that point, Intel just went like, well, but uh, let's start chopping up Xeons. How much can we chop off of these before they they are relevant to consumers, and well, we're we're seeing the results of it now. It's it's a freaking mess. Yeah. Also, also, I I read that I didn't know that because I as not having an, an X two ninety nine i nine CPU yet, I didn't analyze the architecture yet, so I couldn't take a look into that. But it seems that the the blocks for the CPU for the CPU cores um, are in odd numbers like eighteen. 12 and things because they have like um, two modules that are used for the for the DDR4 uh, controller. So they're like 18 because two modules are like um, DDR4 controllers and 28 on the higher hand because it's 30 minus two DDR4 controllers because two channels for each controller and everything. So that's interesting. So you could actually see where this is going with the next CPUs. We can, if they're planning to launch a six core CPU for the low end, we may actually see a 22 core for the next HEDT platform because it's 24 minus two. Yeah. I, I don't think they'd want to do that. The, the like they're is. already, like, if you're at Intel right now, it's already, you must be going, like, we are selling Xeons for, off like, the price. awful the prices. Yeah, like, awful. Price. Like, you'd never, ever want to sell, uh, what's it called, the i9... Uh, the top of the end, 7980XE. Yeah, the, yeah, the 7980XE. You never want to sell that CPU because it's like if we sold that as a Xeon, it would be worth twice or double or even four times as much. Yeah. Yeah. It sort of and saturates the raw market. And it just, yeah. And it's like they would have been forcing these high, like anybody who needed high core count, who had a high core count workloads, they'd force them into the Xeon price range very easily until. I think that's on Frederick. purpose. I, I hope that's on purpose. I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, and it's just if, good business. If you take a look 
Yeah, if you take a look Brit, at the... Like, you don't want your features to be like, you don't want to put all your features everywhere because then people will be able to choose the best bang for buck. You need to force them to go for a very specific feature that they need to spend extra money on. Yeah. So, but, yeah, and if Intel... If you take a look at the Epic versus Threadripper configurations, they have similar prices, like... 8 cores for 8 cores, 16 for 16, etc, etc. But there's like a few differences that make it crucial to choose one or another in some conditions. For example, PCIe lanes, um, warranty, like there's 5 years warranty on those CPUs instead of 3 or 2 according to the country. Uh, ECC support, even though Ryzen and Threadripper both support ECC memory, it just yeah. depends on the motherboard. And the K7 from Gigabyte supports ECC memory. The Gaming 7 for, for the X39 supports ECC memories. I didn't see support on the ASUS ports, even though I gotta check the Zenith Extreme if it does support actually. So you have a, a lot of choices, things that you don't have with Intel. And I guess, I mean, it. It's, it's clear that on the price performance ratio, AMD is so on a higher level compared to Intel. From low end desktop to high end servers. And if you actually take a look at the scores that were uploaded today, because there were many scores uploaded today, even though it was just from Neo, the, our friend at the overclocker. Uh, it, so it's just one CPU, it's not a statistic. But as you could see, when compared to the 7960X, which whose benches were released today to on a on a backstep from Intel because they wanted to ruin Threadripper's day, uh, you can see that the IPC is similar, like clock per clock, core per core. They're like on the same level. And, and with Threadripper running on some of the slowest memory ever. <laughs> yes. uh, exactly. So that, that's like we all know the Infinity Fabric just loves DDR4 frequency. And, and latency. So we well, no, frequency first and timings like by sort of once you hit 3200, the timings start being more important. But until 3200, you just want clock, 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 clock. Absolutely. And right now, the main problem, like, Threadripper seems to exhibit all of Ryzen's memory controller issues, as in, if you make it cold, the memory controller stops working, pretty much. So, right now, all the top scores for Threadripper are with 2600, uh, 26, uh, even, yeah, no, just 2600 on the memory at really tight timings of 99822. Yeah. So, we're like in DDR3, like, actually, this beats most DDR3 in yeah. terms of timings. 2609. So, yeah, well, 9998, <laughs> because you had, like, kits that were yeah. doing, like, 8, not 12, and 8, and then you had, like, 9, 12, 12 kits, and... 9, eight. 12, 12, 28, oh god, those kits were awful, 20. actually, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah but the 10, 10, 10, 11, 11, 30, and so, yeah, we, we, we're actually adding, and those were 21, 33 megahertz, not 2600 megahertz, so we're actually pushing it further, but, as you said, we yeah. need there just doesn't oh. seem to be any real indication of the kind of yield on Threadripper in terms of XOC because... There well, there there is just one chip, yeah. And yeah. Uh, apparently, like, there, what I've heard in a lot of places is that the, the Threadripper CPUs are uh, top bins of the regular Zeppelin dies. Mm -hmm. So if you compare, like, a top-of-the-line Zeppelin, you're looking at, like, 5.4 gigahertz Cinebench, and right now we're looking at, like, 5.3 Cinebench on the Threadripper. So, if there was a bigger sample size, we'd probably be seeing higher frequencies. Also, yeah. BIOS maturity plays a big role in that memory overclocking capability. Yes. And also, if you should take into consideration that the 7960X is not available for buying yet. It will be and available. when it will be available, it'll cost 60% more, I think. 80% more. Wait, it's gonna oh, be right. seventeen ninety nine, so it's gonna be eight hundred more. more. So guys, uh, that, that that puts you in 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 a nice situation. Wait, for the price of the Intel CPU, you can buy a sixteen core CPU from AMD, a mainboard, 
and the memory kit. And maybe for the XOC clockers, he wouldn't, they don't give a flying fuck about it, because they get it for free, either it's AMD or Intel. For end users that really need more cores, that's really important. So even though they say, yeah, Intel has the crown for performance, yeah, but no one's buying that. See, so no one cares. Yeah, yeah, that that is definitely true. It's I I, I can't see a lot of people buying a seven nine sixty X. The problem I mean, how, though, how many CPUs are gonna are they gonna sell for that? Like twenty for the top twenty on HWBot? Fifty maybe if they buy two each one for bidding. How many of the top <laughs> twenty do you think are actually gonna have to buy them? Yeah, if wait, they wait, buy wait, it. Wait, wait, yeah, if wait. they buy it. I don't think anybody, if somebody's buying high-end desktop Intel chips, they're just going to buy the 18 core. They're going to completely ignore the rest of the line. Yeah, for 200 yeah. bucks. Why it's... would you buy the rest of them? Because here's the thing. It's like if you're benching 10 core, 12 core, 14 core, points-wise, the scores suck. Like, they're yeah. terrible. Um, so you want the 18 core because you might be able to use that for 3D mark. And then you want, like, the 8 core. Because that one actually does decent glow, like that has a decent point amount in the in the global ranking. So uh, yeah. also also the twelve cores actually, because now there's the nineteen twenty X, so there's gonna be some. Yeah, but that depends how many people run nineteen twenty Xs. So uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. there's also the nineteen twenty. Yeah, the nineteen twenty is, is the kicker for, for, for Threadripper because that for is the key twelve core. I just I just yeah. realized something. Sorry, I just literally yeah. realized something. Like someone mentioned the word player earlier. This technically, I won't be working for player after this weekend. Oh. I'll be now be working for Anantech. So I'm moving up in the world, if that makes sense. Just yeah, got, it, it, I, I'm fine. sure it just, it's been on my mind. I just thought to myself, player, player, player. And then I thought, I don't work for player anymore, technically. <laughs> like, I'm sorry if I wasn't updated. Last week you were, now you're not. Yeah. <laughs> That's now it's I... Anantech. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a tough week for, for reviewers because of yes. Threadripper. So you know that, you're one of us, so you know that. And yeah, I guess it's it's been a nice discussion about, about Threadripper. There's so much more about Threadripper, but it came out today. So we're going to leave it for something for the next episode or we would, we would run out of topics. And with that, I'd like to thank Gav for being here for the for the OC show. Much. Thank you for having me again. Thank, thank you. I'd like to thank Billzoid <laughs> for being here too, even though he disconnected because of um, internet problems. And for the for today's episode, it's everything. It's all. It's done. And we'll see you in the next one. And don't forget, keep pushing it.